Anti-ship missiles are some of the most important weapons in warfare. Over recent decades, there are some missiles that have stood out as world leaders. The ones we're going to look at in this video are some of the most powerful and sophisticated ship killers the world has ever seen. In 1965, the U.S. Navy began developing an anti-ship missile designed to target surfaced submarines. Naval slang for a submarine is a whale, so because of this, the missile was designated the Harpoon. Following the sinking of the Israeli destroyer Elot in 1967 by Soviet-made Styx anti-ship cruise missiles, the U.S. Navy saw a widening gap in their capabilities and contracted McDonnell Douglas to begin the Harpoon missile program. By 1977, the Navy started using the Harpoon as its basic anti-ship missile across its fleet. An air-launched variant followed soon after, first seen on the Navy's P-3 Orion in 1979 and later on F-A-18 Hornet and B-52H Bomber, among other aircraft. The Harpoon missile has since been integrated into foreign F-16 aircraft and is presently being integrated into foreign F-15 aircraft. In 1998, an advanced upgrade to the Harpoon missile, Block 2, was developed. This upgraded missile incorporated Global Positioning System-assisted inertial navigation, which lets the system have both anti-ship and a land attack capability. The Harpoon Block 2 Plus gives a rapid capability enhancement for the Navy that includes a new GPS guidance unit, reliability and survivability of the weapon, a new data link interface that enables in-flight updates, improved target selectivity, an aboard option, and enhanced resistance to electronic countermeasures. Our next missile is the RBS-17. This is a Swedish variation of the AGM-114 Hellfire missile. It has been adapted for an anti-ship role and can be launched from naval vessels or a ground firing post depending on requirements. The AGM-114 Hellfire missile was designed to defeat armored vehicles at standoff ranges. The vehicles related to this missile are the AH-64 Apache and AH-1 Cobra attack helicopters. However, the Hellfire missile is able to be launched from other helicopters and platforms. The guidance system of the Hellfire has evolved from the semi-active laser in the early models to the latest generation of millimeter wave guidance. The Hellfire missile was first seen during the Gulf War in 1991's Operation Desert Storm, achieving a significant victory over Iraqi armored forces. RBS-17 is a laser-guided missile system used by units of the Swedish Amphibious Brigade to deter the enemy from penetrating ships or ports in the Swedish archipelago. The system has high precision and can be fired from shore on ships and other locations at sea and on land. The amphibious units can illuminate the target at which the missile is directed with a laser designator. These missiles are equipped with a 9-kilogram warhead and have a range of about 8 kilometers. The length of the missile is 163 centimeters and it has a diameter of 17.8 centimeters. The warhead section contains the HE frag warhead, fuse, and guidance section group. The propulsion part of the missile consists of the rocket motor and igniter. The control section has four actuators, a pneumatic bottle, a pneumatic manifold, and pneumatic distribution tubing. The RBS-17, also known as the Robot-17, is a Saab Bofors Dynamics-led development to modify the AGM-114 Hellfire. Work on the Swedish Coastal Defense Missile began back in the 80s. It is man-portable with a missile weighing 48 kilograms in addition to the launcher, firing system, and laser targeting module. Usually, it's operated in the field by a team of five men, with two operating the laser targeting system and three on the weapon itself. LRASM is the next missile we're looking at. This acronym stands for Long Range Anti Ship Missiles, and they're for use against high priority enemy targets like aircraft carriers, troop transport ships, and guided missile cruisers. LRASM anti ship missiles can be guided toward enemy ships from as far away as 200 nautical miles by its launch aircraft. The missile uses a multi mode sensor suite, weapon data link, and enhanced digital anti jam global positioning system to seek and destroy important targets within groups of ships at sea. The missile can receive updates through its data link or can use onboard sensors to find its target instead. LRASM will fly toward its target at medium altitude and then drop to low altitude for what's known as a sea skimming approach to counter shipboard anti missile defenses. The missile uses onboard targeting systems to find the target independently, 
without the need for intelligence or supporting services like GPS satellite navigation and data links. Lockheed Martin is designing the missile with advanced counter-countermeasures to evade hostile active defense systems. The BAE Systems Design Seeker and Guidance System uses jam-resistant GPS and inertial navigation sensors, an electro-optical imaging infrared seeker with automatic scene and target matching recognition, a data link, passive electronic support measures with passive radar homing, and radar warning receiver sensors. Artificial intelligence software uses all of these features to locate enemy ships and avoid neutral shipping in crowded areas. The missile automatically distinguishes target RF and infrared emissions data and classifies, locates, and identifies these emissions for planning its path of attack. The missile's data link lets other systems feed the missile a real-time electronic picture of the battlefield to enable several of the missiles to work together by sharing data to cooperate in an attack using a swarm. Aside from short, low-power data link transmissions, the LRASM does not emit signals, so it often can't be detected by radar. An LRASM missile can also find its own target autonomously by using its passive radar homing to locate sea and land targets. The missile travels at high subsonic speeds that enable the missile to fly low near the ocean. This lets the missile hide in the curvature of the Earth from enemy air defense radar for most of the missile's flight. The weapon was designed as a joint project of the U.S. Defense Advanced Projects Agency and the Air Force to design an advanced anti-ship missile that can launch from the Navy F-A-18 E and F Super Hornet Jet Fighter Bomber as well as from the Air Force B-1B Lancer Long Range Strategic Bomber. In the future, the missile will also launch from the P-8A Poseidon Maritime Patrol Aircraft, the F-35 Lightning II Joint Strike Fighter, as well as from the Navy Mark 41 Shipboard Vertical Launch System. There are also submarine-launched versions that have been reviewed for future use. LRASM's wide-angle floodlight antenna can scan a wider arc in front of the missile for enemy radar emissions than radar can. The missile is intelligent enough that it uses AI to detect new threats in its flight path, classify them, and fly around them. Once it gets close enough to something like an enemy task force center around an aircraft carrier, it can compare the ships in front of it to an onboard library of enemy vessels, making sure it strikes an aircraft carrier and not a frigate. In addition to its guidance capability, LRASM has a range in excess of 200 miles. This is three times as long as the older Harpoon missile we looked at earlier. The 1000 Blast Fragmentation Warhead is twice the size of Harpoon's, and a single missile would likely take out a 9,000-ton destroyer-sized ship. The LRASM's unique guidance system should prove resilient against modern anti-ship missile defenses, almost all of which rely on radar to be effective. What do you think about these missiles? Let us know in the comments, and please like this video if you've enjoyed it. If you want to see more videos like this one, then subscribe to Spotlight for more. Thanks for watching.